I find it interesting that there are so many so-called black Americans that follow after the so-called African spirituality while at the same time bashing the Bible, bashing so-called Christians, and bashing the church. I want to respond to a comment that was made on one of Sadnetta's videos. He started a topic and asked the question if the devil or the serpent lied when he spoke to Adam and Eve. I responded and says, yes. The lie came about when he said that you will not die. Now, I've spoken on this in a prior video because the type of death that he was referring to was a physical death. And see, what many fail to realize is that the devil keeps you trapped in a spiritual or better yet, a natural realm, a materialistic realm. He entices you with carnal things, with material possessions at the same time, stealing your spiritual essence, keeping you spiritually blind. The type of death that they suffered was separation from the Most High. It was a spiritual death. Although they did not die a physical death. Now the young man, which is of course someone that has no videos and he's got no photo of himself. These are the people that usually talk the loudest. But I responded to a comment that he made to me. And I referred to him as being spiritually dead. His response to me was, I'm not spiritually dead. I'm into African spirituality. The Bible is fantasy. There are no biblical burial sites anywhere to prove any of the biblical characters existed. Those stories in the Bible are fantasies of delusional, power-hungry white men who had control of the literature centuries ago, like King James, for example. And then he says, trust me, I'm far from spiritually dead. If only you knew who you converse with. Now, my response to him was a question. Because you have so many so-called black conscious folks that claim African spirituality, claim to worship their ancestors, which in fact are not their ancestors, are not their blood ancestors, but they're worshiping people they don't know. They're worshiping, in most cases, demons. And you wonder why the results of your life is what we see now. You wonder why you are still at the bottom of society. Now, my question to him was, where are the burial sites of your great or your great great grandparents? Because the so called black co conscious community and black folks are always talking about their ancestors and African spirituality and they do ancestral uh, worship. But who are you worshiping? Are they people that, according to your bloodline, or are they people that you read in a book that someone wrote? So if you can't give an answer to your own bloodline, what make you think someone will listen to you if you're speaking of ancestors that you don't know, that you have no connections to, that you have never had connections to? So my question is, 
Where are the burial sites of your great or your great great grandparents? Have you ever visited them? Where are the burial sites of your African ancestors before slavery? I'm sure because you do African uh, spirituality and you worship your ancestors, I'm sure you know who they are. You have to have their names. You have to have connections even to those that still exist today. See, so it's easy to say that there's no biblical proof and where are the grave sites and where is this and where's the proof that these people in the Bible existed when you can't even prove your own existence? You can't even prove the existence of your own ancestors. How many generations can you go back in your own family, your own bloodline? So I asked the question, have you ever visited them? Where are the burial sites of your African ancestors? Before slavery, what are your African bloodline descendants' names? What are their names? Tell me who they are since you know so much about your ancestors to the point where you worship your so-called African ancestors. Now, I want to leave you with a scripture because my intention was not to be on this too long. And it's taken from Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, reading the 16th to the 22nd verse, and it reads as follows. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed to devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that beget thee, thou, thou art unmindful and has forgotten God that formed thee. The 19th verse reads, And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Now, pay attention to this 20th verse where it says, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. In other words, the most high, in many cases, in most cases in this time, is just sitting back watching the results of your life. So when many of you cry out that don't know God, that never gave him a chance, when you turn your back on the Most High, says he don't exist, you start whoring after other gods whom your forefathers did not know, the Most High is sitting back observing and watching what your end will be. So when you decide to cry out to him and he refused to answer you, just know that he's sitting back watching the results of your own choices and actions in your life. So when you cry out, I prayed and God didn't hear me. I prayed and asked God to help me and he didn't help me. Well, maybe you should take the time out to look at your life and how you live before disaster struck. See, you have to serve God every day. I'm not saying that you, you, you have to be perfect. But when you wake up every morning, the first thing you should do when you roll out of your bed is give thanks to the Most High. Ask Him to bless you and to watch over you and your family to keep you. And then when you go throughout your day, it is your responsibility to live an upright lifestyle. 
You cannot play on the devil's playground and not expect the devil to one day show up. So while you're dilly-dallying on the devil's playground, and disaster strikes, and then you want to call upon the Most High for help, and he's not going to hear you. Know why? Because he hid his face from you. And he will see what your end shall be. And then it says, For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. The 21st verse, verse says, They have moved me to jealousy, with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Now, you talk about the white man. The white man is the most high secret weapon against you, against your unrighteousness, against your ungodliness, against you being unholy. I'm going to read that again. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. See, you call the white man the devil. You call the white man out of his name. You say he came out of caves. But keep in mind, that's the most high's secret weapon against you. And then it says, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And the 22nd verse says, for a fire is kindled in mine anger. And shall burn unto the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I'll read that 22nd verse again. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. And shall burn unto the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and understanding of his word. So my question is, who are your ancestors, your bloodline ancestors? Tell me who they are. Don't repeat to me some things you read in a book of fictitious characters that you claim to have knowledge on. Maybe you don't know who I am. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.